Hello, welcome back to Average Gamer Plays Factorio. Now, as you can see, maybe if you're looking at this uh, mini map over here, I have rearranged and reorganized the um, these layouts for these uh, smelting setups. Um, so the way this is going to work, this is uh, copper ore coming in from this mine down here. So I've just got a simple little train just going forwards and backwards uh, to this copper. I think I've got two trains actually sort of set up because I've got a stacker here, a stacker there for it, and then a stacker at the other end for the trains to come in as well. So we've got um, a train coming in. Now I was umming and ahhing a lot about the design of the, the layout of this. You can see the sort of slightly awkward looking thing here. What this is, is... Um, there's a stop here for uh, a refueling train to come in. I was working out, I was trying to work out how I was going to get these trains that are only going to go between the bottom half of these smelting arrays down to the ores and the mines down here, how I was going to refuel those because the main refueling thing for the um, the nuclear fuel is going to go to the uh, the LTN depots in the main base and there isn't an LTN depot down here because these trains don't run on LTN. So what I've ended up doing, and I sort of undenied about this quite a lot, and I've got a coal mine here and a little train that goes forwards and backwards and all these refuel stations, they're all red because they're turned off because they're all uh, fully uh, equipped. But these... Um, this uh, storage box is the steel chest is connected to a logistics network it's got 200 uh, coal in there at the moment and this station is set to enabled when cold is less than 50 so as long as there's enough coal in the storage box then the station is turned off and as soon as it gets gets down to uh, 50 or less the station is enabled the coal refueling train comes along dumps some more coal in there and then this just goes along on this little belt and up and along to here where this uh, the, the, the longer train will will then be refueled and I was trying to work out if I could get it I didn't want to have the coal refueling line to get in the way of the um, the stacker here and the way that I've organized this this curve is like the shortest um, you know this is the minimum sort of curve you can do on a rail line so I couldn't actually squeeze another line in further up here along there because then there wouldn't be enough space for it to turn the, the, for the train to turn the corner and get back out again and I could have just moved the whole lot down a few but I thought well these refueling trains I mean it comes in and it goes along this way and then it's going to cross the track go in here and then merge back in coming back out and the amount of times that the refueling train is going to come forwards and backwards is not really going to cause an issue of any sort of deadlocks or whatever so I'm happy with that because it's not going to slow anything down whatsoever now I haven't shown this on camera building this because it's all part of the same building blocks that I'd already had um, in terms of the um, the smelting array and the load and unload stations and the stacker and the curves it's all blueprints that I've already got and I'm just sort of putting them together in the right order having said that putting them together in the right order wasn't actually as straightforward as it seems because I ended up putting the rails out junction when it should have been rails in and the rails in when it should have been rails out and I actually put the LTN station pointing in the wrong direction so when I first switched this on and tried to get it running the the train didn't have any path because the train was coming down here uh, and then it was sort of like this track goes uh, inbound and then I had this train track with the station at the other end um, coming in the opposite direction and and the train was just saying you know no path and it wasn't working so I had to and of course I'd already actually run this for a little while and all these steel chests were full of copper plate by now so I had to put down a whole bunch of other steel chests move all the uh, all the, the 
contents out into storage take up the old station put it back down pointing the other way which is why these lines are a little bit sort of off kilter because they were designed originally with the station being the other way and they're a little bit neater because uh, all the engines were up this end and then the uh, the wagons were down this end so it's it's still fitted in and it's it's you know i'm not out to sort of i mean i still had a couple of um tiles play um you know room to play down here so i could have moved the whole um uh, smelting array just down a tile or two if I absolutely had to but I've managed to squeeze it in now I still need to rejig um, these other two the other two um, oops. if I just wander over to the other one you can see how it was originally designed um, if, I, if I get out you'll see my uh, it's a little bit brighter because I've got the um, afraid of the dark mod going on but still um, yeah, this was all designed with the train coming in this way for the station, but then the way that the uh, the stacker and the in and out was designed, the train was going to come in the opposite direction down the line. So I've still got to sort of take these down and redo it. It's going to be a lot easier because I haven't started using these smelting arrays yet and there's no, um, there's no plates in these boxes to get in the way. So I'll just have to use the bots, take all that out, put the new one back in update the blueprint and um, that'll be all ready to go so I've also started let me uh, there's my spidertron couldn't quite see it Let's get back into spidertron uh, let me just wander over to um, I had some issues when I tried to turn this on, it was nothing, you know, the LTN system kind of wasn't working at all. Nothing was nothing was moving. It kept on saying no trains available. And the reason for that was when I'd put everything in and I'd wired it all together, when you connect the LTN station to the combinator via the red cable, the red wire, you're supposed to link the red wire to the lamp and I had actually linked it to the station itself. And I think you can still see that there's still some red light, the red wires going to the station. I should take that one out because it doesn't do anything. So I had to take all these stations off, put them back on again, join them back up with the red wires going to the correct part of the station and then it suddenly started working. Um, I don't know what these... Oh, right, I've picked up... I've got lots of spare copper plate for some reason. Well, yeah, I filled... I took everything out of the chest, and then I filled the chest back up again. I had some left over. So, it's just dumping all that out into... Uh, I've got a few of these storage boxes dotted about the place, and I need to... Um, I need to consolidate all my stuff and get them all back in the one place near where the... Um, the old building train comes in. I think I shall set up a little, the little. I think I've already got a couple of boxes down here. Yes, I've already got a few boxes with random stuff down there. So I'll just add to that. I'll just uh, yeah. I'll empty. I'll empty out my uh, inventory and uh, fill that back up again. Now I still need to um, tweak. Uh, I can never quite seem to get it right first time. Um, I still need to tweak the um, the rail signals and chain signals on here because I don't want that second train to go around the corner. I want it to sort of wait further back. Um, I mean, not that it makes a lot of difference, but... I don't want this train to sort of pull all the way up to here. So in fact, let me get into there. Um, put it into manual mode. Drive it backwards a little bit. So I think what I need to do is... Um, drive that forwards a little bit to there. So if I take out this chain signal here all those main signals turn red so that's fine and then we'll have the chain signals at the back here um, right they should be yep 
No, what I need is chain signal there, chain signals here. And then main signals at the back. Because that way, this one is, is red because there's a train in here. This one is green, so this train will come all the way. If another train needs to come in, it'll come in down this line. Uh, and then it'll wait here because this one is red. So that's what I need to do. I, I need to make notes because every time I set up a stacker, I get it signaled wrong. And it's only when I see the trains coming into it that I realise what it is I've done. So I was building all this stuff and I was playing around with these stations and trying to get it right, trying to get it working and then realising that I'd put the wrong junctions in at the rails and then, you know, not wired anything up properly and it took a little bit of um, troubleshooting. And then I looked at the mining productivity and realised that it had kind of not moved for a long time. So I headed back to the main base to have a look. I realised when I came back to have another look at this um, little factory down here that everything had stopped. It wasn't doing any research. And the reason it wasn't doing any research was that I was very, very low on yellow science, which comes in on this line here. The reason I was very low on yellow science was that it didn't have any blue circuits. The reason it didn't have any blue circuits was because it didn't have any sulphur, any uh, sulfuric acid. So then I wandered down to have another look at the oil processing plant. And I realised that it was using all the petroleum gas to make bits of plastic and... It was doing the bits of plastic, it was converting petroleum into more solid fuel down here for, for powering the uh, the train and for, you know, making rocket fuel. And there wasn't enough going to make um, sulphur. So I've turned off these... Um, uh, I've got two of these machines still going, but I've cut this line here so the, the petroleum doesn't go any further than there. So these aren't powered. None of these are powered because I'm getting plenty of plastic coming in from the other the other coal liquefaction plant. And I've now got plenty of sulphur coming out and I've put some beacons in so it actually produces it nice and quickly. So I've got plenty of sulphur, plenty of sulfuric acid. The production started up again. Now because I've not been paying attention to it, I had lost... Um, the benefit of a lot of rockets that I'd launched. So I was launching rockets and it was generating space science but the um, um, the uh, the silo was, uh, was full and it wasn't uh, able to uh, put any back out onto the line and if we have a look at the production statistics over 10 hours and we filter it for space science. We have a look at the space science line there. There's a whole section of time here where we were just getting space science coming in in dribs and drabs. So all these rockets that were launched, I wasn't getting the full benefit of, of the full quota of space science coming in because it had all backed up on the line. Now I've just noticed as well just now that we're not getting any rocket fuel coming in so let's have a look into that because I thought I'd fix this earlier and in fact I mean I had fixed it for a while because um, that was the end of mining productivity I think 11 it was getting stuck on and it's now sort of raced through 12 and it's halfway through 13 and it's now sort of finished again so let's have a look and see why we're not getting any rocket fuel And let's have a look. So, nothing is coming out on that line. There's no sulfuric acid there. Petroleum is now full. So this is what I need to um, look into, is um, how to keep everything moving and then not have it all 
um, use up too much of it. So if I were to put a line back into there, these would start producing. These would start producing again. Everything would start flowing. We start getting some more rocket fuel coming out on the line. And then the rockets will carry on being launched. So it's a constant process of and I, I, I could set up a circuit like I did on the pump here um, with maybe a little tank to say <coughs> if there's less uh, if there's more than so much petroleum in the system then feed it out onto the plastic line and if there's less then don't and just feed it all out onto the um, um, you know for rocket fuel and solid fuel here so that might be something to look into as well because I'm now um, I mean when I was producing all this sulfur it was fine because everything was being used up but now the sulfur is completely backed up um, and now I think it's going to uh, come to a halt again soon much coming out on this line is there yeah I think these are starting to slow down a little bit because again there's not that much plastic production going on to try and use it all up If I turn off, um, if I turn off some of these machines, we'll have fewer machines here producing um, like uh, solid fuel. Fewer machines producing solid fuel, and then we might have more. You see, this is now run out of um, running out of solid of, of light oil again. Now, this was because I'd got a secondary line. Um, If I turn that one off, is that then going to start using more of more of this line now? And therefore burn up more of the, pl uh, the, the petroleum. But it's still This is all nicely chugging along now. What I've ended up doing is le using less light oil here to make the solid fuel and then more petroleum there to make solid fuel. And it's always it's constantly a case of balancing everything out. So I'm maybe I'm not getting enough solid fuel coming out to feed all these rocket fuel machines. But I am sort of everything's a little bit more balanced in terms of the liquids. But as long as we're still getting some solid fuel coming out, uh, some rocket fuel rather, then we will be 
uh, able to carry on launching some rockets. So let's have another little look and see what that is doing. Uh, oh yes, it has done because there's there's some uh, space science coming in. So once there's space science coming in and then there's research going on, then the rest of the factory works and it uses more plastic and it's you know making more circuits and you know using sulfur um, to make the blue science and, and whatever else. So everything is starting to get used up as long as research is going on. Um, we've now launched somewhere in the region of 130 odd rockets I think. Let's have another little look. Uh, it says there on the right 142. And there's still little bits of yeah that's where all my rocket fuel is then coming in so we'll start sort of using up um, some more of the other stuff that we're making here and then we'll work on rocket number 143. Now the other thing that I did um, this copper line now only extends as far as here. The, the, the copper was getting very very sparse and it turned out that even just you know these four smelting lines weren't enough to create all the copper plates that we were using. So I've ended up bringing in, uh, set up another smelter along here. This was the copper mine that we originally put in to, um, to make the modules. I put in some extra lines coming off that with the ores and then smelting it. And I've got these trains coming forwards and backwards, picking up the plates just from over here, bringing them down to the top of the line and I've got so these copper is from the original smelters and the original mine and then this copper at the top is from the mine near the uh, modules and it means that this line here making the low density structures has now got all the copper that it needs so we're not short of low density structures here for the rocket and the satellites so when I started when I when I put that in and um, everything started sort of ticking along very very quickly and uh, it it fair raced through mining productivity 12 to be honest um, it slowed down a little bit now because as I said we had that issue with the rocket fuel so it's a constant uh, I'm hoping I won't have these sort of issues on on the mega base because I'm gonna make sure that I've got enough raw materials coming in um, to make what we need and it's going to be very easy to add another mine and another I think I'm going to end up having um, four or five mines at least on the go for each of iron and copper and that's only because um, there's only so much you can get off a mine it doesn't matter how big the mine is or how densely packed it is um, a mining drill can only cover so much of it and the only way you can get more out on the mining drills is to put speed modules on it but even then there's a maximum speed at which the um, the mine the mining drill can actually get the ore out the ground and if you need the ores to come out quicker than that you're going to need more than one mine so if we have a look at this one here uh, let's do one in the middle so I know for sure it's going to work. Now we've got mining productivity 12 going on. We're in a situation where we're getting more bonus ores coming out than actual ores. Which is good going. But this mine is getting depleted rather quickly. If I have a look at this, that is now 4.2 million. Now I remember looking at it maybe not so long ago and it was six and a half million and then it was 5.4 and now it's only 4.2 so we're getting the ores out of here rather sw rather swiftly. Um, and even then you know even now that I've, I'm setting this copper to only be you know like three quarters of the factory because it's not doing the low density structures and whatever at the top all these lines are still moving pretty darn quickly 
we're still getting through you know the all the um all the copper that we're mining and all the plates that we're producing they're still getting used up oh now that i've changed that line Plastic's drying up now. That is now backed up on light oil because I've turned all these off so we're not using the light oil as much as we're used to. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do something uh, in terms of... Um, Yeah, I'm still burning up some solid fuel at night for, uh, for a little bit of extra power. And it's not that I need the power, it's that I need to use the solid fuel so that these machines keep generating more of it, so that the, the, the fluids keep getting used up. I think I might... I've never been that keen on a, uh, an oil production facility that just does absolutely everything all in one go because there's so much that needs balancing and now there's not enough so if I turn this off down here the sulfur should start increasing we're going to start getting more Now that I've got less, well, nothing coming out down here. And if I turn that one off, there's going to be less coming out down there. And then these should start. Perking up a little bit. I don't know. I think it's still the light all that we're um Yeah. I'm going to have to have a rethink and I might end up sort of splitting this out into because what I've done in previous um, previous factories was have one factory just doing rocket fuel and one factory just doing plastic and one factory just doing sulfur and whatever and a little bit of something else and then trying not to get everything doing everything all in one go. So I need to do the advanced oil processing for lubricant because that comes from the heavy oil um, and the light oil for the rocket fuel that comes from advanced oil processing. Plastics can just come from um, the coal liquefaction and that uses up the petroleum but I still need you know if I'm just having an oil facility um, I did one just for rocket fuel and it just turned everything into solid fuel it did the light oil and the petroleum into solid fuel and if you balance that out right properly then it's fine but it's when you start needing to use um, yeah to make the sulfur and the sulfuric acid and the lubricant as well I'll have a think I might take all of this out and sort of put separate little plants in and just have, you know, one or two oil refineries going to make the lubricant and the rest making something else. And then I'll kind of just have all the plastic coming in from um, the remote uh, facility out there. Anyway, the upshot of all this was... See, this is now... This is all still going quite nicely all these labs doing the research all the lines are full of everything I mean I had a situation where we were running out of green um, science and that was because I ended up tweaking this uh, green circuit input into here because it wasn't getting the circuits into this assembler fast enough um, so it wasn't making the green science fast enough. 
So we had full lines of everything and then tribs and trabs of, of little green bottles. So now that's uh, the end of that science thing coming in from the space. So hopefully there'll be another rocket being launched pretty soon and then some more space science on this line. Thirty-four percent. It's a little bit slower than it used to be. But it will get there. So yeah, as long as the research keeps on going, we'll be alright. But there isn't any more research that I can do. All the infinite research needs um space science. So I can't just keep other bits of research ticking over. There's a few little bits I can do, atomic bombs and stronger explosives, but that's, you know, it's not going to take long to do all those, and they're one-offs, and the things I don't really need anyway. So all the, the, the only um, infinite ones are worker robot speed and mining productivity, and the mining productivity is more useful to me. Um, so ultimately it means that in order for the research to carry on I have to keep launching rockets because there isn't that much else I can do without the space science. So I've been putting in quite a few hours in between episodes and just watching this and sort of waiting to see where it gets bottlenecked and where it starts slowing down. Which means that I haven't actually been building as much over on this side as as I wanted to. I wanted to be in a state, a situation where all this infrastructure was in place and I could start working on some um, circuit factories. And I'm very, very close to that, to be honest with you. I just need to sort of do some final tweaking and fix these stations here and just turn those on and, and set up some mines for the iron. So I've got, um, I mean, I've got iron mine over here and I've got an iron mine up there which is going. So that'll be enough to keep us going for the for the, the near future, to be honest with you. I don't need to sort of get more mines set up down here just so that these smelting rates get used. I can, I can turn those on as and when I need them. So I've got iron plate and copper plate in this area now. I need to set up, if I'm going to be making red circuits, I need to set up uh, some plastics. And I think I had plastic production I had over there because there was a big uh, oil thing, uh, oil facility there. So I'll look into that. I might just look into doing more coal liquefaction because there's plenty of coal down here now. And I might just have, you know, just like I did over here just duplicate all this um, I mean that's still um, 11 million there yeah I'll, I'll now I'll still keep that going for the um, yeah you know, as on when we need to make any more modules because I'm sure we will because as, as we put down the bigger factory here it's using up a lot of modules and I'm not actually run out of any ingredients every time I've wanted um, modules and in fact well having said that what prompted me to go back to the main factory to have a look and see if it was still running smoothly was that I wasn't getting any uh, stack inserters coming through on the building train and it turned out there was a little bit of a bottleneck or something with the um, the fast inserters which is an ingredient for stack inserters so looking at that and then I realized that there was bottlenecks with other things as well so there was a little bit of t uh, tweaking and tidying up to do over there. So I'm very very nearly at the stage and I will probably do it um, in my next uh, session gaming of uh, setting up, um, yeah I'll set up a plastic factory down here and I'll set up some green circuit factories because um, they only need uh, red and uh, iron and copper plates. And um, we'll just sort of progress with the next stage. 
and I don't know exactly how many of these factories I'm going to need but ultimately I think the answer is going to be lots and lots and lots so I'll try and sort of have as many of those in this these sort of areas as I can squeeze in um, making some sciences and we shall uh, we'll carry on with the factory from there so I mean everything here is kind of grinding to a halt again because uh, we're just waiting for the next set of space science to come in so this is where it this is where it does grind to a halt because if everything stops because we haven't got, we're not getting any rockets being launched then we're not getting any ingredients or any intermediary products being made to actually launch the rockets and talking of which there it goes Here comes the science. There it is. Now I'd actually set up as well a little buffer um, just in case we were in the situation where we were launching rockets faster than we were doing the science. Um, it's just basically going to sort of fill everything up. There's this, this, this uh, and I think this has actually had sort of four or five thousand science in it at one point but it's all been used up since then so that's probably why mining productivity 12 got done so quickly because there was a buffer uh, in there I mean if it's not needed then it just comes goes in and comes straight out again but if this line gets backed up then it'll stay in the chest and at least then it's got somewhere to go when it comes out the rocket silo the rocket silo will still empty out all the science that it does regardless of whether we're actually um, the, regardless of whether the factory is, is using it or not so I put that in to try and help keep everything going and then once this is doing the research then everything else all the other little factories making the science packs spring into life slowly but surely so yeah a little bit more tidying up to do sorry there's not been any actual building in this episode I might combine it with the next one and edit it all together um, I've just been talking for like 40 minutes now just saying what I've been doing on the last sort of three four five hours of gameplay <laughs> see I don't know how interesting it is to see me sort of put down things that I've already put down before um, I should have see when I'm trying to solve a problem I'll look at something and I'll stare at it for five minutes and try and think about what to do so again that's not very interesting to watch I think it's sort of might be slightly better for me to do some of these things off camera and then talk through it afterwards and then when I get back on camera I'll just do the building the factory and then sort of talk a bit more about my thought process in, involved with that but pros and cons I suppose I shall um, I'll probably on camera I'll do a bit of a rejig of this and see if I can get all this working a little bit more smoothly and seg segregate it out a little bit so that even if one part of it stops another part carries on Um, that might be a better option so yeah that's something to do for next time I mean there's always one more thing to do before I get around to building the main mega base in there. always more and more and more to do it's a never ending game so yeah that's it for now I will uh, I'll leave it there for now and I'll say see you next time